Hello YouTube, this is Mahan and welcome to my channel. In the very first video of this channel, I'm gonna go over the steps of making your Star Wars artwork in Blender and Photoshop. You don't necessarily need a crazy hardware to create the scene on your own. So you can follow along on any PC or laptop and recreate the scene. So without any hesitation, let's begin. Sketching your ideas. For this step, you could use a pencil and a paper or Photoshop. If you do not have a graphic tablet, it's totally fine. I am using a mouse. You don't really need to draw any complex shapes. As long as you know what you are drawing, you're totally good to go. Next, we will go to Sketchfab and download some 3D models for our scene. I will download some Star Wars models which are available for free. You can check them out on Sketchfab or any other website that you know. After we have our models, we will open up Blender and jump right into 3D. I will use the Ant Landscape add-on, which comes with Blender, to create the landscape. I will use the Large Train preset. Play around with the values like Offset, Depth and Gain to achieve the results that you want. I was going for a kind of flat looking terrain here. When you're happy with the result that you have, set up your camera. Then, turn on the composition guides and turn on the rule of thirds, so you can use the guides in your benefit. For a composition, as you see, I'm using a wide aspect ratio. Next step is importing in some 3D models. I'll import a bunch of 3D rocks that I downloaded from Quicksol Megascan library, which is a vast 3D library and it's totally free and available for all of you to use. Then, I will add some modifiers, like mirror modifier and simple deform modifier, and play around with the settings so I can randomize the rocks and create different variations, so I can then scatter them all around the scene. Create a sphere and place it in the middle of your composition, so you can use it as a planet that is visible in the sky. After that, I'll import the 3D speeder that we downloaded from Sketchfab and place it in the scene. Use the landscape add-on again to create some different terrain that looks like mountains and place them in the far background. After doing that, it's finally time for lighting. Import an HDR and play around with it. Rotate it on the Z-axis, adjust the values until you are happy with the result. I'll add the sunlight too. Adjust the rotation so it kind of matches the direction of our HDR light. In the settings, in the add-on section, enable the import planes as images add-on. And then use it to import an image of a sky Put the sky in the background, then create a new material for the sky. In the material tab for the sky, connect the texture to the emission and turn up the emission slightly so you get a brighter sky. Import some textures from Quixel Mega Scan Bridge for the terrain that we created earlier. You can also import a second texture and set it all up in the material step and then use a mix shader to break up the texture of the terrain so it's not looking all uniform. You can use a noise texture and plug it into the factor of the mix shader then play with the values until you get the result that you're happy with. Go on and add some keyframes to your speeder and move it a little bit forward. Then in the render settings, turn on the motion blur and turn it down slightly. In this way, our speeder has a sense of movement. You should do the same process with the clone trooper that we are going to import next. I use the AccuRig software to rig the clone trooper that I downloaded earlier from Sketchfab. You can use Mixamo to rig your characters. Then we will import the character back into Blender. Use the pose mode to pose this character manually and place him on the speeder. Make him kind of look like he's sitting on the speeder. Mm -hmm. 
Here I start adjusting the lighting a little bit to create uh, some sort of feeling of sunset lighting situation because I think that would make our piece way more dramatic. Play around with the HDR and the sunlight to achieve the result that you have in your mind. You can also add two emission shaders to the back of your speeders engines just to make them look more sci-fi-ish, I guess? Then it is time to enable the render layers. Go on and enable the Z-Depth Pass and the Mist Pass. We will use these passes in the Photoshop to create atmosphere. That way we don't have to use volumetrics in our rendering. You don't really want to use volumetrics if you're rendering on a low-end PC. We want to separate the whole scene into three sections. Foreground, midground, and background. Render the scene in separate layers. Now it is time to take our layers into Photoshop. I'm gonna go over some general steps. As you see, I changed the texture of the ground and also painted some texture on the top of the rocks that we have in the scene. I also tried a bunch of different sky textures until I found something that matches the scene. I also used the mist pass to introduce some atmosphere into the scene. After a little bit of tweaking and color grading, our final image is ready. Thank you for watching the video till the end. I hope you learned something new. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. This is a new channel and it would mean a lot to me. There's gonna be content like this every week and I will try to improve the overall quality of the videos and the tutorials for you guys. I hope I see you in the next videos. Until another tutorial, goodbye and good luck.